The J&E Stevens Company of Cromwell, Connecticut, formed in 1843, manufactured cast iron hardware, hammers, and a few iron toys. The success they found producing those iron toys resulted in them becoming the largest manufacturer of cast iron toys in the country. One of their most popular toy revolvers was the Bango Cap Pistol. Today, we restore one. <laughs> The Bang-O Cap Pistol. These were cast iron with a nickel-plated coating. This one has been through quite a few toy gunfights. And it's rusted up so badly that the trigger won't fire and the barrel assembly won't even open to accept caps. So it's time to disassemble this as much as we can and get to the cleanup process. There are a total of three rusted screws and nuts that eventually will need to be replaced, but for right now, let's get this thing apart. All that surface rust has to go, so I'll be using Metal Rescue, which is basically just a bath that you let your parts soak in for an hour or so to kill that brown badness. And after a little over an hour, you can see the Metal Rescue has done its job. And I didn't have to scrub a single thing. In fact, it did such a good job of getting inside this pistol that I was able to separate the two main components. Now it's just a matter of pulling a few pieces apart, then I just gave everything another good rust removing soak. You can tell the metal rescue is really working as the water gets much darker because that rust is getting pulled off the parts. The vast majority of rust has been killed. Now I'll use my wire brush attachment on the Dremel just to get any additional surface rust off. All the parts are now clean, but now we have a major task that requires protective gloves and a respirator. I'm going to be using liquid fire. This is basically sulfuric acid that's used to clear drains. The major components of this Bang-O cap pistol are nickel plated, and in order to restore it with nickel, the old plating has to come off, which I'll do by burning it off. This process took a while, and I needed to monitor it because I didn't want to etch off any of that cast iron. After about 45 minutes, the components were removed from the sulfuric acid, giving it a quick water rinse, and sure enough, that nickel plating is gone. To make sure I had a completely gook-free surface, I gave everything a good rub down with some Scotch-Brite. All the parts are cleaned and looking good. Now it's time for the next step, electroplating. I'll be making my own nickel acetate, and to do that, we'll be using distilled vinegar, which we'll pour into a large mason jar, and we'll be adding a little bit of salt to that distilled vinegar and mixing it up good. I picked up two solid nickel plates that will create our nickel acetate. I bent the edges over just a little bit so that they could hang on to the edge of our mason jar. Using my DC power supply with positive and negative leads, I'll hook one lead up to one piece of nickel and hook the other lead up to the other one. I'll flip on the power supply and then juice everything up with about 10 volts at one amp. For you science geeks out there, the nickel source that's connected to the negative lead will start to create hydrogen bubbles, and the positive lead connected to the other nickel source will make oxygen bubbles. They originally used nickel plating to create a corrosion-resistant coating, but over a period of time, it becomes less efficient. Creating the nickel acetate is a long process. It took about two and a half hours and slowly the solution started turning green. That's exactly what I want. Now it's time to apply that nickel to our parts through the process of electroplating. After shutting down my power supply, I'll remove the nickel piece attached to the negative lead and attach my part to that negative lead and drop it in my acetate. Then I'll fire up the power supply and drop the voltage down to about two volts. This is a considerably shorter process, which took about two minutes per part. And when I was done, I had a freshly nickel-plated piece to my Bang-O revolver. Now it's just a matter of electroplating the other pieces. The two springs are really all that's left, and I just use my steel brush on those to clean off the rust. 
So what about the two plastic halves of the grip? Well, these are actually made of tenite, which is a cellulose thermoplastic that the Eastman Chemical Company created back in 1929. It's basically plastic and has some finished properties of wood, but these need to be cleaned up. And the easiest way to do it is with my ultrasonic cleaner. And I'll add some Simple Green, which is an environmentally friendly cleaner that does a great job. I'll run this for about three minutes and look at these grips now. There's still a few tough stains that didn't come out and then I'll clean those up by hand. Okay, all of the parts for our J&E Stevens Company Bang O Pistol are done. Now it's time for reassembly. The first piece is the hammer, which I'll lay in place, and then I'll drop in the trigger piece, followed by a small little piece that's actually in charge of rolling the caps up. Then there's the straight metal piece that acts as a spring and applies tension to the hammer. Then there's the smaller spring, which has double duty. It applies tension to the trigger and also helps the little mechanism that rolls the caps up to get back in place. Then I'll add the cover that not only conceals the mechanism, but keeps everything in place. I replaced all those rusted screws and nuts with some brand new, nice, shiny ones. So I'll run all three of those in with their corresponding nuts and tighten them up. And the final step is to take those two halves for the grip, put them together, and tighten them up with the screw and nut. Check it out, our Bang-O cap pistol is done. I think it turned out great, but does it bang? Well, this circa 1938 toy pistol took what was called mammoth caps. They were about 3 eighths of an inch wide or 10 millimeters, and I could not find them at all. So I got the only roll caps I could find and loaded them up in our cap gun. The mechanism that rolled the caps up worked fine, but I was not able to get consistent shots just because the width of the newer caps is much smaller. This Bango cap pistol has been restored and I made it bang. I hope you enjoyed the restoration of this 80 plus year old cap gun. And if you'd like to check out my other Kip K restored restoration projects, click one of the boxes on the screen. Oh, and if there's something you'd like to see restored, tell me in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.